For many developing countries around the world, the poor still struggle with housing. It is a hallmark of urbanization, and in the Caribbean, one may argue that squatting goes further back. They would say that maybe during the days of slavery with Maroons, and post-slavery with former slaves that just squatted on Crown lands. In Trinidad and Tobago in particular, there is the Squatter Regularization Act. What does this mean? Who are squatters? Squatters are persons that occupy sometimes private land or state lands illegally. But what is state land, you may be asking? Any land that is not privately owned or freehold land is referred to as state land. State land is land belonging to the government. With the Regularization Act, sometimes one may mix up that with adverse possession. What exactly is adverse possession? And some may say that squatters, they have rights. What do they mean by this? What are these rights? With adverse possession, one can obtain a legal court order to obtain possession of that land after 16 years if the land is privately owned. And, and the squatter was squatting on that land for a minimum of 16 years. However, if the squatter was squatting on that land for at least 30 years and it is state owned, they may have a legal entitlement to that land. You see me, after all of this, I, I feel like going and find a piece of land to squat on, yes? But money done gone, I don't know. So you know, yeah. I go in and squat. The government had to help me. I had this piece of land for sale. You understand? I had the certificate of character and everything. You could get that, no problem. You understand? Mm. Great thing. So, you sure, like I was defrauded before, you know? No. Nah, it is better nah, not nah, be no, nah, no nah, thing nah. that would not hunt my head. You don't worry yourself. If I tell you again that day, that is yours day. You understand? You just handle me and everything will be good. I if, only have 6,000 though. Nah, we feel it is a sprung, you know? Uh, Come now, man. What a nice piece of land you get in here. You understand? What's that here? I hear since the 90s. Hey, oh, my piece of land. Oh, boy. Sorry, he. Hey, go away now, boy. Who's going to go to the boy? Go away hey, now, boy. You understand? Just study here. <sighs> you must envy me. You understand? What's your nice place, cut and thing? You understand? You just handle me up. Nice, I treat you nice. If you work, wait until you've done bill, and then you can pay me. I no problem with that. Yeah, well, I went down this road before. I ain't able to this push is not it out road. again. This is not a road, this right? is not a truck. You understand? You I will get me. back to you. Let me just talk to, to my legal counsel and I'll go get back you to you. You know no legal counsel, you know. I have my papers, I have my documents. <sighs> There's a lot that's happening here and you may be wondering, who has the entitlement? Who has the entitlement to this right? What exactly is the COC or Certificate of Comfort? The Certificate of Comfort is just a personal right. It is not a legal right or a title to the land. It's just a personal right. That is that you would not be evicted or ejected from that parcel of land. That is all that is. So after the Certificate of Comfort, there's what you call the statutory deed and then the deed of lease. With the deed of lease, you then have the legal title to that piece of land. With a certifi certificate of title, you do not have the title to the land, but rather a personal right that you would not be evicted or ejected from that particular land. And what is the understanding of this? The Squatter Regularization Act of the 1st of January 1998, it stated that persons who were squatting prior to that may have the legal entitlement to get a certificate of comfort, then statutory, then a deed of lease. But they had a time span in which they should have applied. So the first gentleman you saw, he may have had claims that he lived in the area prior to 1998. However, he may not, may not have applied for the certificate of comfort. So the time span was between the 1st of January 1998 and the 27th of October 2000. That was the time span in which persons occupying state land that were squatting could have had the legal title to that land via an application. The application process was for persons 18 years and over, a resident of Trinidad and Tobago must not be the owner of property in Trinidad and Tobago. And those who were squatting on state land 
not private lands. So what are you trying to tell me now? You bringing your lawyer to, to talk about this? Yeah, 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 I'm not going to this again. That ain't called for, where your lawyer? Yay! Oh God. <laughs> good morning, ma'am. Hi, good morning. This man trying to sell me this land, but I'm not sure. I need to help him. Okay, I understand. So remember we went through steps last time about yeah. purchasing land? Well, I call you now. Okay, good, <laughs> good. I'm glad that you sought legal advice this time. So first of all, do you have the deed for your land? Do you no, have I have any? a certificate of a comfort for the land, you understand? Right. But you see, you see all this matter of fact, I will get my lawyer on the way, you understand? Because I try to explain something to she, but I know what I have going on here. I had the real thing because I hear a long time, you understand? I over here a long time, and if it's that, nobody can tell me nothing, you understand? Well, I hear the man in whoever. Who man? That you don't have no. Are you a sentry? Hey, hey, yes, hey. Man. this mm -hmm. is my land, that's my family land. Wait, you have no right to yeah, what's going on? Wow. Yeah, what's going on? Yeah. Don't study here. He's a guy, and he's going away from me, please, now, boy. I guess it's my boy. Go away now, he's a guy, and he's boy. You're not thinking oh, trying that, boy. You're not a citizen here. Wait. What kind of thing is it? Any of my lawyer on the way? And we go sort this thing out clearly, you understand? Yeah. So as far as I understand, hmm. you have a certificate of comfort in the land. Thank you, ma'am. And you are trying to sell Ms. Thank John you, the land today. Yeah. Okay. You understand? So, Ms. Look John. my lawyer in Norwich. Keep it thing. Perfect. Look perfect. my lawyer now come. You understand? What's going on, sir? I'm all right, sir. I'm, I'm glad right. rich. Nice well, to meet you, man. Yeah, man. Good morning, colleague. Good morning. All right. So I understand that there's a little uh, issue with the uh, purchase of this land. Yes. 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 My client indicates that he has a certificate of Correct. comfort, comfort. Also for this particular area of land. That's yes. right. Um, and then I understand that there's some other persons as well who want to claim that they have possession of this land. He's a guy and he's yes. nothing yes. in Trinidad. The gentleman just came by actually. Some persons may want to claim ownership of the land through adverse possession. Now, the principle of law is that there's a presumption that the person who has uh, the title, paper title to the property, is the owner of the property, but that person could be dispossessed if it is that somebody is in actual possession of the land. Now, in order to claim adverse possession, there are two elements that must be satisfied. One is the factual possession, and the other is animus possidendi. Now, let me explain both of them. The uh, factual possession means that there must be some degree of physical control of the property, which means that there must be exclusive uh, possession or exclusive control by the person who is actually on the land, as well as there must be uh, singular and conclusive possession. Depending on the nature of land, that's going to the nature and the, the manner in which the land is used, that is what's going to determine what amongst uh, factual possession. Let me give you an example. Say, for example, you may have a person who is in possession of an agricultural piece of land. In order for that person to actually demonstrate that they have factual possession of the land, that person may have to uh, rear animals on the land. The person may have to plant some crops, long-term crops, like coconut trees and some other uh, fruit trees. Furthermore, the person may want to also uh, erect a fence. And that's, that's indeed a very good action of demonstrating that uh, there is factual possession there. Let me go further now on to the other element, which is the animus possidendi, which means that you must have the intention to, to possess. Uh, not just intention to possess against the title owner, but intention to possess against the world. Now, this must be a, a, a clear intention, or a clear act, and the court looks at the facts of the entire case to determine whether or not there was intention to possess the property. So you can't merely say that I am going to acquire this property through possessing. You have to do short clear acts. Uh, for example, the construction of the fence. If it is to just uh, for decoration purposes, the court may not amount, that may not amount to uh, intention to, to dispossess or intention to possess the property. But if it is that you are saying that I am doing this because I want to claim ownership of this property and dispossess or every other title owner, then that may just amount to uh, showing the intention. So the court looks at the, the entire uh, case, they look at the circumstances and they also look at the factual possession as well as the animus tessidendi. In cases such as these, who is right and who is wrong? Is there a right and a wrong? Again, we have to reiterate, in the case of adverse possession as, as what this counsel is indicating to his client, there are stipulations as we indicated earlier. 
16 years and over occupying that parcel of land without authorization for private property. That means a property that is not owned by the government, but a private individual. And in the case of state property, it must be 30 years and over that you must be occupying that parcel of land. So would you want to take such liability or risk, risk of being ejected, risk that your house may be broken down? It is a risk that one sometimes take because of um, poverty and because of um, unemployment and adverse social conditions. So in terms of the Squatter Regularization Act, as the individual, the first individual that came in who claimed that he has that right or entitlement to that land, he is Guyanese. This right is for persons that are nationals of Trinidad and Tobago to such entitlement. But remember the period of time for a certificate of comfort to be issued was persons prior to January 1st, 1998. And that time was extended for the application until the 27th of October, 2000. We are in 2020 now. So what may, what may apply to other persons that are squatting may be adverse possession of such lands. But let the lawyers deal with it. And we are with John Pacheco in the Springville, Claxon Bay Village. I'm one of the squatter in a squatter in settlement. John, tell me your story. I was here 20 years. He came and he gave us numbers. They told us that we had numbers, right? We didn't push anything because what happened? I was always encouraged to go for dealer comfort. But then it had nothing and things was hard. I said, I don't want to stay in the back here. The problem I'm having is that although I don't have any documents for the land, they came and break down the house I had here. So I went to the equal house, to the commission, they came up for one and followed one. But any time that I didn't respond to them, the same people from the LSA, they came and told me to go ahead and build because apparently they recognize I've been the radio school, right? However, any time I try to develop there or do anything to my house, they keep coming and breaking it down. So how long have you been living in the area? I always said 2000. So it's 20 years over. I tried doing an extension to my house. They came on the birthday. Right, so all of these are acts of possession, really. This person has mm. constructed a building on the property. Right. And you see there's a big sign, not, not a seal, seal owner. Right. Well, if it is at the person who is actually claiming possession. But they're the Guyanese. That's the Guyanese. They're the Guyanese. So mm. That way you mark up that, not for sake. Everybody yeah. wants to buy them out. So, okay. yeah, no, so it's, a, it's a high, a high um, value property. Yeah, yeah, as you can see, it's a good property. Mm. You understand? But my piece of land, I'll show you good. I can tell her she does that. That's why she make sure I call you. Tell her she knows X is X. And it's that now because she did a grab already and I just feel sorry for she. As a single parent, I help her. Well, you know, the law is the law. So we'll have a conversation regarding that because as you said, mm -hmm. you have a certificate of comfort. Comfort. That's okay. right. So we'll have a conversation regarding that. No problem. I have no problem with that. Certificate of comfort is just basically the first stage. People holding certificates of comfort for squatter size developed by the Land Settlements Agency, LSA, who applies for the ownership, the LSA will then publish notice of title investigations, conducting searches to verify that the land is state land. The LSA will then publish the name of the certificate of comfort holder, as well as a description of the land in the newspapers. If all is well, a premium of 25% of its market value of the land will be charged. What is the next stage? You go to statutory and then you can go to a deed of lease. With the deed of lease, you have total entitlement, meaning to say you have legal rights and title to that parcel of land for a period of 199 years. So, my mother paying her rent, like, for 18 years now to this woman in foreign. She could go and send some documents with you and, and file and thing and, and get the house then. Because your mom was actually paying rent, she actually had consent of the owner. That means yes. that she doesn't actually meet the standard required by the courts. So the courts generally, they require factual possession and an intention to possess. Okay. So the factual possession is actually not by consent of the owner. So as the person in the next country, as you said, allowed her to live there, she's actually a tenant at will. Mm -hmm. She won't be an adverse possessor because this adverse possessor, this possessor actually has to have the intention to exclude everybody else. But the fact that that person has given her possession, sorry, has given her consent to stay on the land, that means that she actually kind of make a solid claim for adverse possession in this case. Okay, so for somebody like me, yeah. right? So I work in, 
I I work in a good while now, and um, I, I, I want something that's mine now, like just a rest my hair, you know, something in time that would be for me. Right. But I not no money. Are you permanently employed? Yes. What are you permanently employed as? Um, like a maintenance worker. Right, yeah. okay, that's great. So what I would actually advise you to do is to go and seek a loans officer in any bank mm -hmm. and to try to get a mortgage. Okay. What the mortgage does is that they finance the land for you so you could actually purchase a piece of land for yourself for oh. you to live on. And they take the legal title in the land and they, they bestow onto you the equitable title and you make the repayments in the in the amounts that they stipulate. So okay. in the monthly payments that they stipulate and once you finish making those monthly payments, the legal title will actually be transferred to you. So after that period of time mm -hmm. where you make the repayments, you actually get the piece of land eventually. Okay, so it's like paying a rent to the bank and it's going to be mine. It's almost like a rental loan, basically. Yes, but you're actually paying the rent to the bank instead, the rent. Mm -hmm. It's not actually rent. It's, it's actually just the fee that you're paying for the bank oh. because you're paying them for financing the land. Oh, all right, right. So it's really okay. a good option for you in this case. In a case like this, as the lawyer was indicating to the client, she can't go into a bank and get pre-approved. What pre-approved means, the loan officer will explain to you to what value of property you will be eligible, meaning to say what you can afford. So there are certain documents banks may ask for, such as a job letter. They may ask you for a payslip, a payslip sometimes three months backdated. They may ask you for a proof of address, so a utility bill. They may ask for more than one, two forms of ID, and so forth. However, there are other steps that one can take such as sometimes going to a real estate agent and these agents sometimes will act to protect your interests but you may be saying so what does an agent work for what is the stipulated cost if an agent is to sell my property they are varying costs such as if the agent is working on the side of the vendor meaning the seller the agent would usually work in Trinidad and Tobago for three to five percent these are all things that one can consider before looking to purchase or acquire property in Trinidad and Tobago.